allow me to be the first to wish you Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. With this occasion, I want to share with you my 360 degrees watch collection just to show you how many things you can achieve by selling a couple of Rolexes. And hope you did the same in this period by bringing the collection together where you can reflect and revise your options for the next year. For me it happens once per year to put them together and the conclusion is that I've added exciting solid watches and I can pick two or three pieces from here and be happy for the rest of my life. That satisfied I am. But to achieve this happiness I had to give up on the trending watches, I had to give up on value retention and collect exactly what I really needed. That being said, 50 watches to present. Let's go! Let's start the presentation with a very, very interesting watch, the Middle multi Fort TV Big Date, which was literally rephrasing my experience of wearing a wristwatch. It always amazes me every time I'm putting it on the wrist because of the dial, the case shape, the Big Date and the way it hugs the wrist, it offers something unmatched or unmatchable by a rounded watch. Call it Patek Philippe, call it a homage, but for me this is one of the most exciting watches I've ever collected and I'm glad I have it. $1000, I'll take it anytime. And then I have a speedy but a reduced one, precisely a model which was produced almost 20 years ago, with a Valjeux 775 movement, having the subdials oriented towards the left. This model is specific for that era made as an upgrade for the classy speedy reduced. I call it pretty dressy due to its reduced size and its reflective dial and I bought it because believe it or not it came as almost brand new with all the box papers and all the accessories and it's pretty amazing to see the original untouched finishing of such a vintage watch already. This Black Bay 54 is my favorite diver out of the Black Bay line. I was and I'm still excited for this release because I am a fan of accurate reissues of the original models. Very true, this is an accurate model through size because the case shape and the bracelet are pretty modern. But still, this is an exciting reduced model, it is very thin, comfortable and well contrasted. It's exactly what I was looking for, especially worn on a long sleeved sweater. The Rolex Explorer is the sole survivor from my tiny Rolex collection. I did good and I'm glad I got rid of the Sub and the Explorer 2 because the prices went down for good. I'm super glad I kept the small version although I would upgrade it to a 40mm version because I'm crazy in love for the dial and for the watch significance. But I feel I would look up for more presents and the 40mm version might be the answer. And I had the period this year when I was attracted by the affordable designs of the 90s with that specific organic alien type of design. So I collected quite a few pieces like the Sector 160 or these two Citizen Promasters which are very cool, especially the titanium version with the integrated bracelet. I guess the common thing about these watches is, besides their designs, the comfort provided and the way they were tailored to sit comfortably on the wrist. And I would add at least a Breitling or a Tag Heuer specific for that era in this mini collection. Exciting designs and still affordable. A collection cannot be a collection without a G-Shock. My selection with a few exceptions is based on the square line because it has a timeless design that is small sized and representative for the brand. Besides that I have the Rangeman, the watch that introduced me for good into this passion, the futuristic B001 model which was pretty trending on YouTube this year making almost half of million of views, but my favorite one must be the Anniversary 5040 PG which sits on a composite bracelet, currently this is my favorite G-Shock to go. In the same category but from the mother brand, I have the exciting 20 bucks Casio World Timer. It remained in my collection because it bothers me every time at 9 pm, especially when I shoot videos or record audio and I have to stop everything that I do to wait for the alarm to stop. I do not remember setting it especially at 9 pm, but I like the fact that it has its own will and I'll probably never stop it. But hold on, I have just a few Casios to show you. I promise not to show, present or mention the T color and I won't do it. But besides the color, the platform is very good for 50 bucks. It is well sized with a decent finishing, spot on and a quirky colored summer watch. And then the Casio edifice is in my view the true Casio. Solid specs, a faceted case made on different layers with different finishings. And specs wise this is qualified as a true everyday watch with a dressy appeal being extremely thin. 
Is there anyone who knows what watch is this? I asked the same question in my group of watch collectors and the answer was... How can you not know about the Chronosport Secrets 30 worn by Magnum PI in the first season? That's right, this is the affordable homage made by Momentum watches for the Secrets. The morning case and the loom is very good on this homage. This was Bond's watch worn in two movies, the 2531 Automatic Omega Seamaster 300M. But this is not only representative because it was worn by James Bond, it was the pioneer of the new Seamaster line with a helium escape valve, skeletonized hands and waves on the twisted lugs. In my view it is a crucial piece in the modern horology and a keeper in my collection because they become pretty collectible and hard to find for good prices nowadays. Now, tied up to the Bond theme, I recently collected potentially one of the most exciting pieces I've ever owned, the 007 edition Seamaster. In the previous video, people were confused why I jumped into the comparison with the Rolex Sub. The idea was pretty simple, the experience of wearing a titanium Bond unveiled some unexpected perceptual feelings, offering a multitude of states. A thing I've never felt with my Submariner or any Rolex. As brand, I fully agree Omega probably will not beat Rolex as brand significance. But especially after the Moonswatch collaboration, the trends exploded in the favor of Omega being reflected on YouTube as well. Other than that, I'm very pleased with the No Time To Die model and I'm curious to see if this will be my most worn watch of 2024. And speaking about my most worn watch, this year I participated to Teddy's selection of our most worn watches of the year. And surprisingly, my most worn piece was the Doxa Sub 300 Caribbean in carbon. This as well as the 007 Seamaster offers some unexpected haptic experiences due to the warm carbon material and the extremely lightweight curved design. I was blown away by this mix of vintage vibe combined with modern materials because I prefer design and comfort in the favor of brand weight. And since we are talking about Doxas, I am a fan due to their historical significance. The brand is equally important as Blancpain, Omega or Rolex and this Doxa Sub 300T in orange is probably the most representative design and color alongside Jacques Cousteau's Shark Hunter model. There are a lot of differences between the Doxa Sub 300 and the 300T, the last one being a proper tool with 1200 meters for resistance and has its own charm as an instrument. But that's not it, I discovered something about myself. And due to the positive feedback of the Cistern watches, I bought the Sub 600, being curious about the quality and the Doxas platform as well. And surprisingly for $120, this is a well-built automatic watch with a ceramic bezel, good finishing and a decent loom, having a date loomed as well. Now, what is surprising because I like this so much as design, this led to the natural purchase of the Doxas Sub 600T. So a homage led to the purchase of the original one. The Sub 600T because it's a true 600 meters for resistance diver, it is thicker than the Cisterns one having 200 meters for resistance. But finishing wise I'm impressed by this model, I like the faceted case but also the thick and the toolish rubber strap which is closed into a beautiful and solid clasp. I like the clasp design even more than the case, which overall is made in the same spirit of the case design, an exciting compelling package and way better than the bracelet version. And with this occasion you've seen my small Doxa collection, which I've never unveiled on the channel. At some point this year, after selling my Rolexes, I was aiming to find something different, which will truly impress me every time I was checking the hour. And it happened. The Chopard Alpine Eagle is exactly the type of watch which has the ability to impress you no matter how exquisite is your watch collection. The way it looks, the way it shines, the way it sits on the wrist, the way the Eagle Iris style is made, it's simply from another league and you can tell this is a watch manufactured in small quantities and obviously comes with a big price tag, which sometimes it makes me uncomfortable to wear because it is really an eye catcher. And there is another one which puts a big smile on my face every time I'm looking at it, the Grand Seiko Sinbin. 
I am still very careful when I choose a more expensive piece and I'm looking at the value retention and Grand Seiko is a brand which can provide great losses. I did receive 20% discount on it, but the message is, I'm so, so happy with this model, I'm so peaceful and satisfied with this titanium pink watch, it deserves all the retail money asked for it. And I'm glad I surpassed this Grand Seiko mental barrier, being happy with this pink 413. And then my mini Certina collection is formed today from a few pieces. The vintage DS2 which didn't receive too much wrist time this year because it was replaced by this stunning modern red dial DS2 which comes as a standard on a leather strap but it can be upgraded with the DS2 turning bezel bracelet. For me this represents an awesome robust watch with great finishing and definitely an eye catcher especially on the bracelet. The next one is the DSPH200M, the heritage model released on a Hesselite crystal 5 years ago. This was a gift from my girlfriend, so has a sentimental significance being received from my favorite brand as well. And then there is the Christmas gift from Certina. This was an exciting, practical and robust watch being an ISO diver with great accuracy and a specific elegance similar to the Black Blackbait 58. And then the last Certina is something I was looking for a long time, the Certina DS3 Chronograph, a series made alongside the DS3 1000 meters for resistance, both made on limited edition in 1888 pieces. This 775 Diver Chronograph is stunning because I found it as well as the Speedy in almost new condition with the original finishing, the extra bracelet and the strap. All I need is to look for the 1000 meters 3 hands model and I will find it. And then racing, of course, the Tag Heuer Monaco, the newest generation with the bracelet. Excellent design, excellent history, which is tied up to racing and Mr. King of Cool Steve McQueen. I bought this watch in the same colors of my restored and functional Corvette C3 from 1980, which I personally painted in the colors of the 1979 C3 pace car. All I need is just the spring to come. Now, just a few tools remaining, the Benarus Meiko Laguna, which is the smaller brother of the Megalodon. I always had an attraction for Seiko's monster's appeal and this is quite a fun reinterpretation of that concept with a mouth full of sharp teeth serving as a dial. Imagine how much loom this beast can provide, but despite its imposing size, the watch wears quite good thanks to its bracelet links. Have I mentioned I collect Seiko's as well? Let's go! I bought recently the Seiko Marine Master 300 in black PVD and a patina theme. This is a limited edition model, extremely handsome, which comes on a comfortable rubber strap. The only problem with this watch is that it's heavy and very hard to match it with comfortable rubbers, but other than that, stunning watch. A solid pillar in any diving collection. But that's not it, I have the other Marine Master, the Darth Tuna, which is an exceptional tool watch with a distinguished design with a ceramic shroud, titanium core, an acrylic bezel insert and no X on the dial. This being the pre-prospects model with the S on the crown, highly collectible. And then a collection is not a collection without a Seiko SKX. That's it. Another Seiko diver, I had the Seiko Uemura, which I regret selling and in exchange I bought the squeezed version of a Willard. Very interesting model, a special edition which comes with tunated straps, but the start of the show here must be the vertical pattern and the overall greyish patina of the markers and the bezel, so a special one. And the freshly reviewed Seiko Alpinist GMT. An excellent purchase, satisfied with the watch, but disappointed by the fact that the bracelet of the Sarb 033 doesn't work with this model. So I have to find another alternative. Other than that, I love the tiny flexed aspect of the GMT, but also the explorer-esque type of the dial with a lacquer surface and metallic numerals and hands. To remain in the same cathedral hands theme, Hamilton Murphy in 38mm is potentially one of my favorite field watches all time, and I had quite a few. The watch was made as a prop for the Interstellar movie, being the watch of my beloved actress Jessica Chastain. Other than that, this is a well-built watch with a classy look and a special appeal. This can be worn as a one watch collection in my view because I like her, because it's solid specs-wise. And then Zin U50 is one of my preferred divers, not the most accurate one having a Salita inside, but definitely design-wise an exciting alternative to Swiss and Japanese divers. I spent a lot of time with this watch and I can't see it leaving from the collection soon, because it is the much needed instrument alternative within a collection of divers. It's different, great looking and extremely comfortable. 
German design. And then very tight and similar to the Xenio 50 is the beautiful Fortis official Cosmonauts automatic 200m diver. I found it in excellent condition again for its age and I bought it immediately, I simply couldn't miss it. 39mm diameter, blasted grey case, beautiful blue dial, tritium markers, the living proof that the brand was making stunning watches in the 90s, but I like their new designs equally. In the same Cosmonauts theme, I have the vintage Bulova Accutron Astronaut, which is a Franken combination with a different bezel, but with the genuine tuning fork movement and the GMT complication. When I bought it, I was drawn into the overall packaging with the JB Bullet bracelet, which is pretty rare and expensive. And then German design again. My stunning Union Glassute Johannes Thurstein is one of the watches which I respect a lot. I respect the brand and the way they're capable to offer extremely good quality for decent prices. This is a complicated calendar with an enamel dial placed into a convenient 41mm case which sits very masculine on the wrist. I simply love it and I'm considering more models from the brand, super underrated as well. And then the Longines Legend Diver is the most exciting watch I bought this year. Not necessarily from the quality perspective, but through the unexpected nature of the purchase which unleashed in me something special. This is a 360 degrees watch, it is sized on the smaller side, it is robust, elegant, legible and properly loomed not to mention the accuracy. I was a Legend Diver fan, but this small sized version was exactly what I really wished and Longines delivered. I love it. The Santos de Cartier is as well one of my preferred watches from the collection and it was throughout the year the second most worn watch, being on my wrist on all sorts of events, workshops or office days. This is a pure statement watch and for me it offers the extra motivation to wear more often elegant clothes to complement it with success. Another strong pillar in my collection, that's for sure. And then this is my fifth ZRC or ZRC and one to rule them all. The North Adventure is a limited edition tailored for the North Pole. It is potentially one of the most collectible ZRC out there and I'm lucky to grab it as unworn with all the accessories, straps and the bracelet. But I like to wear it on this beautiful 7 friends and watches strap made specifically for the ZRC fitment. Surprisingly, my only Tissot from the collection is the Heritage World Timer Navigator Le Fleche d'Orient, made in collaboration with Albini Prasa. I attended to a watchmaking course with the theme to reassemble this watch and believe it or not, it still works in cost parameters. Well done, Andre. And then the Perion Nera Rogue is a good example of an honest micro brand. This is a Swiss made brand assembled by my friend Andy, which has roots from Transylvania. And I'm honestly super excited about the new Regia Diver, and I'm looking forward to review it. This is a special watch which I want to introduce you to the Frederic Constant High Life in 39mm on a Salmon dial. I have huge respect for the brand quality and the movements offered, the newer models being equipped with Le Juperet Cosque movements and 100m waterproof cases, not to mention the interchangeable straps. A stunning underrated brand to be discovered and the review must be done soon. And then the Orient Mako in 40mm, a solid alternative to Seiko's Prospex Divers. Pretty much a well-designed case, modernized with sharper facets and lesser classic combinations of texts on the dial. Solid purchase, too bad the loom pip, wait, there is no loom pip. But I'm curious what's next in terms of Orient Divers if they took this Black Bay direction. The Timex Marlin Chronograph is one of my preferred ones, they really made an appealing one, I'd say better than the Q homage of a vintage Daytona, because it reflects very well the charm of a vintage chronograph through design, through size and through fitment. And to make it even more attractive, I installed this beautiful well-made racing strap from 7 friends and watches, I think it elevates the racing vibe of the watch. The last watch from my collection is an AliExpress mechanical chronograph made by whatever it's named. And the living proof of the quote, you get what you paid for. Very nice open case back mechanical, but it doesn't work properly anymore. The start stop pusher is not actioning the mechanism. And that is why I review Timex and other solid known brands instead of the AliExpress ones. So, hope you enjoyed my 2023 watch collection, I'm not gonna lie, it's massive and overwhelming. Hopefully for 2024 the goal will be to massively truncate the collection and keep the ones that really make sense. 
at least I hope. So that's it once again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and have a brave 2020.